Hello traders, this is Rich from TradeSite. This is the market preview for the coming session. This is going to be for August 29th, 2013. We'll say we have pretty much a classic measuring day where we use some uh, some key levels and kind of just and kind of just kind of work off the previous day's range expansion. The uh, S&Ps were f f uh, closed on the day four handles higher. The uh, Nasdaq side was about nine higher. The New York trend closed right at about the even line at the one level. The advanced declines were kind of nowhere uh, with small gains on both sides. So all in all, it was just kind of kind of a, kind of a measuring day where uh, both sides of the market kind of test each other to see if uh, see if the downward action is going to going to hold. At the same time, the uh, the longs came in just to just to test a little bit to see if they could take it up. But classic day where not a lot of volume and not a lot of action happened. Oftentimes, this is a pause day for uh, for something much more significant, which would be this coming session. So let's get right to it and drill down to the uh, to the uh, price action on the chart of the ES futures. All right, so here's the Russell, here's the um, excuse me here's the ES futures. You see that we uh, have this, this little inside day here. If you take a look at today's real body, it's kind of con it's contained within the lower half of the previous day's range. So this is definitely uh, uh, more negative than positive. They did try some higher prices for a while, but they were clearly rejected. We did use this 4 level at 1625 for support, especially in the uh, the key uh, overnight price discovery process in the Globex session. But for now, we kind of kind of closed just below the middle. Of uh, the previous day's candle, so the uh, downtrend is still in place. So levels to watch to the downside are gonna be, is going to be four A's at 16.25, then below that at 16.09 and a quarter. To the upside, uh, the gap window from uh, from two days ago is going to be in play. That's 16.44, and then of course the ultimate gap fill, which is going to coincide with the six A's level and also the 50 DMA. So a lot of a lot of levels to watch there. Uh, they're going to be important. Nasdaq side is pretty much just the same, uh, more or less just a measuring day. It did try higher prices for a little while here. It got rejected, closed below the midpoint of the prior candle, so that all of that qualifies as a uh, as kind of a resting or a or a, or a testing day, if you will. Key support is uh, just below at uh, 3,046 and a half. More important support is going to come in at the at the 50 DMA, where that area resides with the uh, static trend line that's active off the uh, secret count. Like the ES, to the upside, the uh, resistance area is going to be the uh, high of that uh, breakdown gap at uh, 3102, 3103, and then the 8 level, which is the origin of that breakdown at 3125, will be the next upside target if the bulls can hold it. All right, here's here's a chart we haven't looked at in a while. This is the uh, the NDX divided by the S and P. This is a this is a ratio chart. This this really kind of uh, really picks up on the relative strength of the NDX versus the S and P. When this ratio is on the rise, that means the NDX has relative strength, and that's that's always positive for the market overall. Right now, we've had some some positive action in that in that uh, in that ratio, and we're coming down to this uh, this breakdown area. So this is going to be key resistance and very, very important for the market. If they can reclaim this and, sh and see some uh, relative strength continue on the NASDAQ side, that's the one thing here that really looks positive for the market. So keep an eye on that. That's going to be very, very important going forward. All right, and here's a look at, uh, here's a look at the uh, cumulative advanced decline lines. On the New York side, we're still kind of slugging here uh, in this downtrend below this key resistance. We're still in this lateral, lateral range. If we do take out this previous low, that's going to be very notable. On the NASDAQ side, didn't do too much today. We had a little bit of a bump up here, so you can see we uh, really didn't follow through and make an, a lower low versus this prior point. So a small positive here, but uh, with just this little measuring day, it doesn't really mean much. You saw how, how sharply we dropped down the previous session, but for now, uh, just this little bit of a measuring day. If we do break and have some real negative uh, numbers tomorrow, this would definitely be negative on the NASDAQ side, breaking below this prior reference point and of course on the uh, New York side uh, that would be a negative but taking out this prior low would definitely be much more meaningful. Alright elsewhere internally here's a look at the uh, the 10 day trend. 10 day trend did advance today we're still kind of in this in this um, mid area as of yesterday today we're at 1.26 and we're getting quite a bit closer to this 1.35 uh, reversal warning threshold so we're getting close to that not yet not there yet 
but uh, if we get another another spike higher, we could easily uh, reach that. So if we do breach that area, that's where we're going to be start looking to uh, take a little short money off and start to take a look at uh, some uh, some long opportunities. But for now, uh, the downtrend is still in place, and we do have more gas in the tank before we hit that 1.35 uh, warning area from the 10-day trend. Call a little bit of a break today in the uh, in the TLT divided by uh, I'm sorry, but but call call a little bit of a break in the S&P divided by the TLT. Uh, we did break down below this uh, this key trend channel. For now, we're kind of just bouncing up here a little bit, but it uh, doesn't really mean much until we uh, can regain more of a positive bias here. And for now, this is really just a bounce and nothing more until uh, until this thing follows through. All right, here's a look at the uh, the multi-sector daily chart. Uh, most of the risk on asset class is all bumped up here a little bit. Uh, the SOX, the uh, BTK, and the BKX were all 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 positive to different degrees. Uh, BKX was a little bit sloppy, um, and we'll talk talk about that more a little bit uh, later. Uh, the uh, XAU was really negative, uh, just really no flight to safety there. Didn't see any kind of uh, didn't see any kind of uh, real rush to get get into uh, into that. So there's no follow through. We're still we're still below. You can see my cursor here. We're still below this key level. Haven't been able to take this out and uh, pivot to the to the upside here. So just a little bit of a just a little peekaboo here. A little sweep above it, but no no follow through to the upside. All right. So here's a look at the individual sectors, rank from best to worst. Also with the uh, with the countdowns on them. So take a look at those as well. Feel free to pause this if you if you want to get a bit, little better look at that. Today the uh, top sector was the uh, XOI. The OSX was also uh, very strong, outperforming the market. So the energy names were definitely at the top of the list. They were followed pretty closely uh, by the SOX was uh, was fairly positive. So we talked about the uh, the SOX and the NDX before. So that that's always positive. When you see the SOX come on, that's very positive for the NDX. The BTK was also positive. So there are a couple heavyweights there in the uh, overall NDX. That were pretty positive. Uh, the bottom of the barrel, um, as we talked about just before, was the uh, XAU, very weak. Uh, really, just uh, just no no support for this. It was essentially just a bid vacuum. The airlines were weak, telecoms, and the housings were uh, were fairly weak as well. Everything else was fairly fairly well bunched in here, just kind of uh, in that classic measuring day, within about uh, plus or minus half of a percent either way. Here's a look at the OSX. Uh, key level overhead is going to be this 8 ace level. Also note that we're uh, we're 11 days up in the seeker count. But look where the one is. The one's all the way up here. We're uh, 11 days up, and we're actually actually below the one. So even if we, even if we get the 13, it's not going to be very much extension in this uh, in this sector. Moving on to the semiconductors, the socks uh, inside day uh, between the two days, we've we've less left this trading range to the upside and that's going to be strong resistance. You can see that today. It took a little little sweep a little sweep at it, but it really didn't have any teeth and uh is still inside. So the uh key thing is going to be make sure you have a range of these two days posted. If we break out this little mini two day range we could uh see a fairly decent move since we're inside here. Here's a look at the banking index the BKX uh was really pretty weak today. Very, kind of just struggling to hang on to this 4 ace level. The 4 ace, four ace level is one of the big threes uh, on the uh, Murray Math Box. So this is uh, definitely intermediate net, intermediate term negative. Uh, keep an eye on uh, uh, this current session's low. If we break that to the downside, definitely going to start looking here at 61, 60, 94 for the next stop to the downside. Here's the XAU, which was very sloppy. Broke to the downside today. Broke out of this little, little range. It swept the high yesterday, put in this outside candle down, closed actually near the near the low of the range after having taken out this range to the upside. So this has resolved itself to the downside. Have to be on guard for a potential follow through. T today uh, today's session was only two days down, so there definitely could be uh, another day's worth of downside. All right, so here's a look at the oil futures. Oil futures uh, did sweep above the risk level. Walked all the way up to this 112.50 area, was rejected. Now we're back down below the risk level, so this 13 exhaustion is still in place. Uh, this 13 exhaustion is is very lateral, like we, like we talked about the other night. It still uh, has no extension to the upside, so it's really based on the signals based on time, counting 
the bars across the chart here rather than on price because there's no extension to the upside here. So definitely, definitely keep that keep that in mind. Nothing, uh, nothing new here as far as the uh, as the count goes, but this uh, this 8 ace level is going to be really important uh, if it trades again. First time was rejected, so keep in mind that uh, everything above this uh, prior high at 112 at 11050 has been uh, rebuffed so far. Here's a weekly chart. You can see here's the prior high right here. They swept above it, tried to climb it up to the 11250 area, but it got rejected. So for now, still trapped, but uh, news driven news driven markets like this can uh, can get very jumpy. All right, so here's the gold chart. The gold's actually much more uh, much more strong than the uh, than the XAU. The thing that the, the key takeaway is that the commodities generally lead the under uh, I'm sorry, the commodity producing stocks generally under un, lead the underlying uh, commodity themselves. So what you want to see is you want to, for a good sustainable move, you want to see the GDX, which uh, represents the gold mining companies as an ETF, or if you will, the XAU which represents the index of those names. You want to see that lead the commodity uh, itself. Right now we're not really seeing that. Key resistance right now at 1437.50 on the box and then, and then big resistance at, at uh, 1500 if they can get there to the upside which is also coincident here. You can see the 200 DMA coming into the play. To the downside the 10 EMA is roughly in the line of the breakout area which is also the static trend line. So the uh, 1385 area is going to be very, very strong support uh, to the downside if we come in there. It's also going to be uh, kind of inbounds with this trend channel that's running right now. So there it is, pop the trend, the uh, regression channel on. So it's also the lower area of this regression channel. So very, very key support there going forward for gold. So keep an eye on that. Uh, right now, still kind of climbing within this uh, overall regression channel. And has not uh, really made a move either way. So for now, still uh, still positive chart there, even though the uh, XAU and the GDX are not supporting that just yet. All right, folks. As always, thanks for listening. This has been Rich for Trade.